What's going on guys, Jay here. If I had told you that one of the most incredibly detailed and deep strategy games of the year involved bird watching, what would you think? If I told you that same game had unbelievably gorgeous watercolor based visuals with a phenomenal soundtrack that just helps you get your mind right, you'd probably think I was a little nuts, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that Wingspan from Monster Couch is that game. I was lucky enough to get a review copy of this game, so let's hop in and take a look. Wingspan from Monster Couch is out now on Steam and can be picked up for $20. This is a digital version of a tabletop game where you play as a bird watcher who is overseeing a preserve. There's a few different offline game modes with a custom game for two to five players, Automa against the AI, he's a little robot birdie, and a tutorial which walks you through the basics of the game. You get the tutorial upon launch, but it's not a bad idea to run through it to refresh yourself when necessary. One of the neat features is the preserve archive, which is an area where you can review saved games you've completed to see your birds you've played in the final score. It's a relatively small addition in the grand scheme of things, but it's nice to refresh your memory on certain strategies you may have used. Online play is a big part of the game. You're able to play real-time games with 5-minute turn intervals for 3 players, asynchronous games with 24-hour turn intervals for 3 players, or custom games where you can fully set your own options. But the main event outside of the actual gameplay is the birds menu. These guys are the stars of the show for a reason, and the birds menu shows a list of birds you've played in the game. Clicking on a specific bird will bring up its details, which will give the trivia for the bird itself, where it can be located in the real world, its special ability in game, the habitat it can be played in, the food it eats, its victory points, the type of nest it uses, its actual wingspan, and how many eggs it can carry. Each bird also has an audio recording of its actual call, making it a really educational area of the game as well. It's kind of magical to immerse yourself in the world of these birds and learn a little bit more about them. And of course, the visuals for each card are stunning. All birds are lovingly rendered and painted, and each are animated. It's a marvelous little place to lose yourself for a few minutes. Of course, losing yourself in this menu isn't the only thing you can really do. This also offers you the opportunity to strategize. You can look at the different abilities that the birds have and become more familiar with them. It allows you to anticipate future moves in the games as you're playing. It's like any collectible card game or trading card game you need to be familiar with the deck you have at hand. And while this is a little bit more random than something like, say, the Lord of the Rings adventure card game, this is still pretty solid as far as understanding what needs to happen. Like, Take, for example, something like the Vulture. There's zero victory points involved here, so looking at it logically, you might think that, nah, it's not necessarily something I need to play. But when you stop and think about the different aspects that the character has and what the bird can actually do, it's probably a smart thing to get it in play early in the game to take advantage of what your opponent's going to do. Games take place over four rounds with diminishing numbers of, of turns each round. In the first round, you'll have eight turns, then seven, then six, and finally in the fourth round, five. At the start of the game, you're presented with ten choices, five birds and five pieces of food. You're able to choose five things to actually keep in your hand, and it's up to you to decide which ones you want. I typically mix and match to make sure I'm able to play a bird first round. Each habitat has different effects, and in the forest one that you're seeing here, you're able to pick food. Now you're able to choose how much food based on what icon is currently active, as you see the five different ones up top. I'm currently able to choose one die. That gives me one different piece of food that I can pick from. You'll notice I chose the mouse food. This gives me two mice in my stash, which is going to allow me to play the peregrine falcon in the grasslands. In the wetlands, you're able to draw new birds, and you really want to pay attention to what food you have on hand so you're able to make sure that the birds you draw, you're able to play. That's why I chose the blue-gray gnat catcher. I have the worm available so I can play him next turn in the forest land. You'll notice at this point when I play the blue-gray gnat catcher that he actually covers up one of the icons in the forest land, and that's where the strategy to the game really comes into play. Because while you can go through life and not really worry about stuff, what you really want to do is get further into these different icons to be able to perform more actions when you take an action. You'll also notice that when I activate an action in this habitat, my blue-gray gnat catcher now activates and I'm able to get a free worm added to my food pool. So you noticed here when I'm actually picking another bird here in the wetlands, I go with the Western Meadowlark. This allows you to lay an egg on any bird with a particular type of nest. Now eggs are important because you actually have to pay an egg cost based on where you're playing a bird on a particular habitat. You'll notice the different egg numbers on top of the different squares other than that first one, which allows you to play a bird for free. One of the things this allows me to do is show you the tuck mechanic, which is used by several birds in the game. In the example of the Peregrine Falcon here, this allows me to draw a card from the deck. When I draw the card, if it's an under 100 centimeter wingspan, I tuck it behind the peregrine falcon, allowing me to get some victory points at the end of the game for those tucked birds. 
Additionally, the Western Meadowlark's power it activates, and I'm able to lay an egg on any bird with a grouping nest as shown in his action. There's a lot of strategy in play here, as mentioned. This is a bit of a different ability, but I wanted to show it off. The Ruby-Throated Hummingbird here. This is kind of like the Uno skip card, I guess, where you're able to actually play an ability that causes everyone to draw food from the bird feeder, but you get to pick who goes first. You actually get to play an advantage here. It's pretty nice. I wanted to show off a couple of things real quick here. With regards to the crow I'm about to draw, you'll see that his food looks like, like a Trivial Pursuit icon, and that actually means he is an omnivore, so you can choose any food to pay his food cost. Now the bird I have active, the Clark's Grebe, when I activate the icon here, I'm able to draw an additional card when activated, but when I do, I also have to discard one from my hand. So there's some risk and reward in play here. And when you've completed all four rounds, that's it. It's time to count up the victory points. The game tallies totals based on your performance each round, as well as adding up things like your birds that are on the cards for your victory points. Those are the feather scores that you see on the cards. Uh, as well as the bonus cards that you have in play, end of round goals, which are targeted on each round card in there, how many eggs you have on your birds, uh, food that are played on cards, and any tucked cards you may have. So as a tabletop gamer, this is something that I've known about for a long time. Wingspan is one of those kind of touchstone games that everyone seems to love that play tabletop games. So when I heard there was a digital version of it coming out, I was very excited about it. Now for $20, this is a steal. This is something that I would have picked up anyway. So getting a review copy, pretty great. But I'm also gonna be picking up the Nintendo Switch version when it releases because this is that good. As a person that loves to be out in nature and to be out amongst the trees and amongst the birds, this is something that meant a lot to me to be able to play this and to get to experience firsthand. Wingspan is a marvelous game. It's incredibly deep. The strategy is something you need to be thinking four or five moves ahead and you constantly need to be checking what your opponent is doing. This is a game for two to five players and it's fantastic. And of course you can play online too, which is great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this coming out on Switch, but I can tell you right now for $20 on Steam, you can't go wrong. Guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite adaptation of a tabletop board game is, because I'm telling you right now, you cannot do better than Wingspan. And if you have played Wingspan before, what's your favorite bird to bring into your reserve? I'm personally a big fan of the Peregrine Falcon. It's my favorite bird. I'm just it's straight up, it's my favorite bird. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It lets us know that you're engaged and you enjoy what we're doing, and we'll keep making content like this. Guys, if you have watched for this long and you've not yet subscribed, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and at the same time ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date and informed whenever we have a new video come out. We're doing at least two videos a week, sometimes more, and I'm hoping to increase that to three videos a week as we move along. I want to thank all of our new viewers who came over from the Konami Tier Maker video. Really appreciate you guys being here. I hope we continue to be able to earn your views. It means a lot that you're here. As always, guys, I have been Jay. I appreciate you being here. Stay square, play more games, and take care. We'll talk to you soon.